It's the Oh Yeah Wrestling Podcast. Oh yeah, Will. Woo! I'm Brad Reed. This is Will. If you're uh, watching the video, we're going to try to keep doing some video stuff. Yeah. Uh, It's been a little slow right now getting it all, you know, into the, uh, I don't know, social media sphere, but... Well... We're working on it, man. We're we're actually things are actually going well as far as like social media is concerned, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean we're man, we're this is episode seven, Brad. Can you believe that, man? We've uh, been no. doing this. this is a seventh episode, and uh, man, we've had some. We've gotten up to around four hundred likes on our Facebook page, man. We've had some interaction. We're going to talk about those interactions on Facebook because I think that's important, man. We don't just pose questions just to pose questions. No, we want to talk about them on the podcast yeah. because the podcast is it yeah the facebook page is the facebook page but this this is the bread and butter man this yeah is and we've it. talked about it we're kind of like you know we're the wwe universe too <laughs> yeah and so we want that interaction we want to hear from you we want to talk about what you have to say on the podcast and not only that you know we're getting out there we're we're hanging out with some of the pro wrestlers around oklahoma city yeah. and going to their shows and uh, we'll talk about some of those coming up, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, th- the next one's May 11th. Uh, but uh, a guy who's not from here, he's a pro wrestler. He goes around all over the nation. Yeah. Martin Casales, a.k.a. Marty the Moth. You may have seen him because he came through. He did. He with the uh, Mid-Southwest Alliance and Lucha Americana show. Mm-hmm. But he's part of Lucha Underground on uh, the El Rey Network. And you can check out the first two seasons on, on Netflix, Netflix yeah. yeah, and they've got a YouTube channel now too. They do so, but every week, you know, man, we talk about this, Brad. Yeah, every single week we talk about this because we need to do something. There we go. We do, do need to do something. Yeah, and you know what? Right here on the Oh Yeah Wrestling Podcast, we did do something. We did. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be on this week's show. This is not a teaser. This is not a no. oh, it might happen. It's not like um, expecting Daniel Bryan to come out and getting someone else. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> no, we actually have Marty the Moth mm-hmm. right here with an interview on the Oh Yeah Wrestling Podcast. And he's such a cool guy. Man, that was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. We did that right before we jumped on the podcast here. And, uh, man, he was just chill and answer the questions and had a lot of jokes and we had jokes with him and uh, we really think you guys are going to enjoy that interview we're going to get to that later in the podcast so we don't want to talk about too much about it now uh but there were some things that happened on raw this week that we want to dig into mm-hmm. and that's going to lead us right into our first segment it's the top three raw stories this raw to me this raw was a little it was funny uh, yes. As you'll hear. <laughs> yeah. But like the Raw and SmackDown this week, it was weird because you've got the greatest Royal Rumble coming up. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But it felt like there's a whole bunch of stuff they're just trying to stuff in to get to that because it was, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Like they didn't plan like out the storylines for this particular well, it's pay-per-view a, like it, they normally do. Yeah, it's a super show. It's not really yes, a pay-per-view. You're right. It's a super show. Yeah, it's a way to showcase all these, you know, championships and even John Cena and Triple H yeah. and all that for a crowd that's never that. going to get to see I, it. I, no, it's yeah. going to be cool. Yeah. It's going to be cool. But I felt like this was a weird Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, especially coming off the Superstar Shakedown. Yeah. But let's uh let's get to it. Uh number <laughs> number 3 this week was a showdown between newcomers to Raw, mm-hmm. Jinder Mahal and Gable, Chad Gable. Ah, wow, look at you. You've been working out. Get yourself a headband. You're that little boy who became tag team champions with Braun Strowman at WrestleMania. <laughs> Isn't it past your bedtime? What are you doing here? Should you be home? <laughs> it's still a sore subject for me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was pretty good. That was pretty funny. Great uh, joke. Although man. they they he goes on to make a uh, joke about Vern Troyer, <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that wasn't good, gender. Yeah, <laughs> a little soon, maybe. Yeah, too soon, soon I yeah. think. <laughs> but, you know, he comes on, and, you know, one of the things that I'm really excited about with Chad Gable coming over to Raw is that, you know, he's in the singles role, and, man, he just – 
we saw some matches before him, before he went over to SmackDown and got hooked up. And, of course, he was with Jason Jordan for a while and that tag team. And then he was with Sheldon Benjamin and, and that tag. And they had some success. And they're on TV every week and they're doing their thing. But at the same time, like, we saw some great matches from Chad Gable a while back. And we're going to get to see that again. And uh, I don't think he's going to disappoint. I really don't. This feud with gender, man, they're two great workers. They know what they're doing inside the ring. They know, how, especially gender, he knows how to cut a promo, obviously. Fan, he's got a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. So what better way to bring Chad Gable into the mix than somebody that has a legit a lot of heat, right, mm -hmm. and to make him that baby face that I think they're going to do. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Um, you know, he was defending Kurt Angle. And yep. you think he'll uh, end up um, – Teaming up with Jason Jordan again? Well, um, you know, that's one of the things that Kurt said. He's like, hey, man, we didn't bring you in to do that. Mm -hmm. We brought you in as a singles run. You may see that later on down the road. Um, they said Jason Jordan's not, you know, too far from a comeback. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And, and uh, I – I just think that he's actually, I, you know, I said this on last week's podcast that I think you could bring him into like the Intercontinental Championship mm -hmm. run, and he's a, a legit contender for it. I, I believe that about him. Well, let's get to the number two moment, which I think you were pretty psyched about. Uh, it was Dolph Ziggler and McIntyre this oh, week. Oh, yeah. I walk around, I see no fire, no ambition, people just collecting checks, and it makes me sick. The times are a-changing. I'm not what WWE wants. I am the wake-up call and reality check this place desperately needs. Mm. We don't give a damn about stealing the show because this, this right here, this is the show. Dolph Ziggler there. Uh, I love Dolph Ziggler. I really do. I think he's a great, a great heel. Um, this is the first time I've been introduced to Drew McIntyre, and I'm thinking that the reason that uh, the bar ended up leaving was so that nobody confused their voices. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a really good possibility. But, uh, man, Ziggler and, and Drew McIntyre are doing something special, I do believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this is going to be a great run. So, um, you know, we talked – about this before and I say that a lot but you know just to bring people up to speed man if they haven't seen it if they're new to the podcast if they're listening for the first time you know Drew McIntyre was he was a part of WWE for a long time mm -hmm. he was a part of this terrible faction called the three man band mm -hmm. uh, but before that he was actually called the chosen one by Vince McMahon right he was the chosen one uh, things don't go great he gets back you know and then he gets released and then he comes back and goes to NXT becomes the NXT champion and then now he's back on Raw man and he is he looks great. Yeah. Now he's part he's part with Dolph Ziggler, who is, man, a great worker. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he can cut that nasty promo, yeah. man. I am the wake up call <clears throat> that this roster doesn't want to see, that the WWE doesn't want to see. And man, I'm I'm loving it, man. I really am. And you know, they fought, you know, Titus Worldwide, kind of beat up on him, but what do you expect? You know, when Dolph came back, uh, uh or he actually left for a little bit. You know, it was back when he was on SmackDown. He mm -hmm. had just won the – was it the U.S. title? Yeah. And he comes back, and he lays it on the ground. He says, people haven't appreciated me. And then he leaves for a few weeks. I had no idea what any of that was about. But after that, you didn't really see him a whole lot more on SmackDown. So I'm really happy that he's on Raw, and he's getting a push. Yeah. You know, he's getting this storyline. I think it's going to be big for Dolph Ziggler. Man, I could see them, you know, this – vacated uh, tag team champions that's going on on Raw right now. Yeah. Uh, we could really uh, – man, I could see them stepping right into that. Yeah. And, you know, they're supposed to be the heels. They're saying all the, the things that would make make us believe that they're heels. But at the same time, they the crowd could get behind them in a big-time way unless they go straight up against a baby face that, you know, just pull some dirty tricks. But other than that, yeah, man, they're great. So you're a big fan of the zigzag Claymore. All day long. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that brings us to the number one uh, raw moment for this week, which, which is great. There was a. <laughs> this is actually going to be a two-parter because there was a lot of good stuff. Oh man. The the Sami Zayn and KO show. 
uh, which you know replaces Ms. TV. Yeah, they they're just funny, you know. And and there was like uh, there was like this part where Sammy was asking Ko, he's like, "Is this going to be every week?" You know, <laughs> and it sounded like a couple guys doing a podcast. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> we're going to do this weekly, but uh, but it was funny and it really just another excuse. This this clip for Sammy Zayn to put on his glasses again, which was funny from mm. last week. Everybody knows how desperately you need this job. Yeah, what do you got? They're talking like, to Kurt Angle. Mm. I, actually, it's six. He's got six. I'm pretty sure it's five. No, no, I'm, I'm positive it's six. Well, hang on. Let me. Uh, it's let me six. Trust check me. my notes here. Yeah, why don't you? All right. What do we got here? Olympic medals, Mary. See, right there. There's your mistake. You forgot Jason Jordan. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's Come no big on. deal. For right years, uh, Kurt kind of forgot about him, too. Ooh, burn. <laughs> that was a burn. Uh, a low blow, but it was pretty funny. They had Miz, uh, they had Miz on Miz TV. Or no, no, I'm sorry, not Miz. They had Kurt Angle on this week on the Sammy and KO show, basically just to you know, rub it in his face that Stephanie picked them you mm-hmm. know, and they're back on the show. It was yeah. good stuff. But they also had uh, another another mention where they burned another WWE superstar. Do you know why they're calling it the greatest Royal Rumble event? Is it because seven championships are on the line? Nope. Is it because Rusev's wife finally gave him permission to take on The Undertaker in a casket match? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, I hope to see. I hope it is weekly. So these guys, you know, you know, they've got the chemistry. They've got the friendship. They've got the history. They have fought forever, as the crowd <laughs> likes to chant when they, you know, they have fought. And, man, they are playing that heel role absolutely perfectly. Mm-hmm. I mean, taking shots at the wrestlers. Uh, just the fact that they brought Lana into it <laughs> <laughs> is hilarious, man. Yeah. You got to appreciate that comedy. You really do. Because, you know, the wrestling is one thing, but these guys getting on the mic is a totally different thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's it's just great because KO gets to play the straight guy and yeah. Sami Zayn is is the guy who's wacky and over the top. and It's just a great combination. I, I, I really – when I first started watching WWE again – Sami Zayn and KO, they weren't my favorite at all. But, you know, I, I hadn't seen the uh, Festival of Friendship or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I hadn't seen any of that. Oh, by the way, that brings me uh, – we did have a little Chris Jericho news. I had to bring it to your attention, man. I had to. Oh, I yeah. know how much of a Jericho fan you are. Yeah. And Jericho was supposed to be part of the Undertaker match, and, and you were so excited, and then you're – your bubble got burst and yeah <laughs> i felt so bad for you man i thought you were kind of sad you i was sad for a few days i was i was moping for and like then a I had, week and then i had to send you a text because chris jericho is going to be part of the 50 man roster yeah of the greatest role Rumble. yeah and this jericho holic mm-hmm. uh, uh, i was so happy but i you know they brought it up because kurt angle <laughs> was telling them like listen y'all are gonna get your ass kicked because <laughs> i'm in the royal rumble yeah because jericho's in the royal rumble uh daniel and then, bryan and then dana bryan and then that night on raw you're going to face Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Yeah. Uh, why couldn't we have Braun Strowman and Lashley at WrestleMania? I don't. don't <laughs> man, why you got to bring him sore stuff, man? You got to just dig at it. All right, you know what? <laughs> Let's move on to something that you actually feel good about, uh, and that's the uh, top three SmackDown moments. Bring it on. Moments. It's the top three SmackDown stories. And uh, this this story, like I say, you're pretty happy about this because you're you're a big cast fan, right? Or, I am. Or at least you're happy that he's back. Mm-hmm. So that'll bring us to uh, the number three moment, which was big cast coming out and interrupting the Miz on Miz TV, basically when we thought we were getting Daniel Bryan. And how did he look, though? Oh, amazing! Woo! <laughs> so here's big cast at our number three SmackDown moment. Daniel Bryan goes back to where he belongs. On the shelf, beaten, battered, bruised, and retired. He should have said battered. And he will (laughs) never 
never cast a shadow over me or anybody else again. That'd be tough to do, though. The guy's yes. seven. He's yes. a big dude. Yes. Throws down the mic. Yeah. So, so Miss TV kicks off SmackDown, right? Yeah. Just to bring all this in, okay? And Miz is calling out Daniel Bryan to be a part of Miss TV. He says, hey, come out, man. Look, blah, 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 long story short. I'm a changed man. If you want to come out and punch me in the face, <laughs> then yeah. you do that. And then Big Cass comes out. So Miz had to be worried for just a second that he was like, I told the little guy to punch me in the face. <laughs> it's not the big guy right. to punch me in the face. But Daniel Bryan uh, – he got cleared on from what Big Cast is telling us here that uh, Daniel Bryan got clear medically cleared the same day that Big Cast did. Right, and he's pissed off about it. He's like, "Look, man, people should be talking about me, not just Daniel Bryan coming back." And he is massively upset about it, and he just knows that. Look, man, here I I am seven feet tall. I used to get pushed around. I used to get bullied. I used to get all this kind of stuff. And that's not going to happen anymore. And the reason why is because I am not like Daniel Bryan. I am big cast. And he goes all into it. And uh, it was a great promo, I think, by big cast. I really do. He's coming off an injury. He puts down a legit promo and I, I just I like it for him and not on top of it he looked like a million bucks with that suit <laughs> yeah um, he came it, out putting on his jacket and adjusting his watch and are we gonna see a little Miz and Big Cass Alliance for a little while you know they well I, I kind of wondered about that because they they didn't quite like come out like as friends no they didn't get into it I mean you know Miz is not an idiot <laughs> yeah. but like a lot of heels do it's just a mutual alliance in the moment. Sure, sure. But don't turn your back. I will stab you. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. So I could moment, see, yeah. I could see them teaming up, and then that going bad at some point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Big Cass, he's another guy that is kind of new to me, but but I'm excited about. Uh, I think you know he's interesting because a lot of those guys look a little awkward as far as their height when they're that tall, but he doesn't. I mean, he no. he's he's just a big. Tall guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's, he's scary. not as thick and not as big, but I mean just like Braun Strowman doesn't mm -hmm. look he doesn't look that way. Yeah, he's just a big, huge guy that unfortunately had you know tore his ACL and now he's recouped and he's back in and and uh, what a strong storyline to be in a part of none other than Daniel Bryan, man. Yeah. All right, number two. This one is Carmella and Charlotte. They sat down for a contract signing. Yeah, which you know sounds boring. Well, and it never goes. Right. It never. It <laughs> right. never turns out to just be a contract signing, which if it did, it would make us mad anyway. But uh, some big things happen. Yeah, and it starts with Carmella. She was really being a nuisance. You know, mm -hmm. she was kind of going around the ring, showing off the belt. You know, I think she was even screaming, woo, at, yeah. at Charlotte. And so Charlotte signs the contract, but had pretty much had enough. Carmella. Carmella, please. Take a seat. He's a true champion. Renee Young. Yeah. yeah. He's tripping. Okay, ladies, now that I have both of you out here, it's time to make this championship match official. <laughs> that was actually Charlotte right yeah. there. She signed just signed it. Yeah. Oh, oh, table to the face. That right was right to Carmella. That was so Go awesome. For Carmella. There was no way to treat the champion. <laughs> It was so awesome because it was kind of brutal. Like, she slams her head down on the table and then pushes the table on top of Carmella as she's falling backwards. And I thought that was awesome. You know, last week, the Melibration, you know, we talked about it on the podcast. It didn't go great as far as, like, fan reaction. So she comes out, and it's like they knew that it didn't go well. Right. So they played off of that, which is pretty good writing, uh, you know, this is the celebration. You know, I showed you this video of me winning the title, me winning the money in the bank, me doing this, and none of you stood up and clapped for me. So what I'm going to do is I want a standing ovation from all of you. Right. And then nobody claps, nobody stands up. <laughs> She's like, so we're going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. And Charlotte comes out. They have that contract signing. And uh, the fact that, you know, the whole entire time, Charlotte just looks so 
mad. Right. She's like, I ain't, I'm so done with you. This is, this. Uh, no, we're not doing this. And she kind of threw her dominance down during this time, man. And it was, to me, for what Carmella is, and she's a Money in the Bank winner and cashed in, which is kind of like that massive heel move, that, you know, kind of chicken poop. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, kinda yeah. Kind of move. And, yeah. And, whew, man, she uh, she got dealt with is what I'm going to say. Her, uh, her little outfits, though, um, not leaving a lot to uh, the imagination on the on the booty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think our wives both have been like, Carmella needs it. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Speaking of the down neither regions, I guess. Man. That, that's a weird segue on most, uh, most nights. Why does Shinsuke like to hit people in the nuts so much? I don't know. Cover your junks because it's the number one SmackDown moment. Oh, and AJ Styles not going to wait any longer. Styles has seen enough. Going to soften up Nakamura on his own. AJ's been wanting to get his hands on Nakamura this entire oh, Another low blow. Yeah. What so the, Come on, man. <laughs> it's like the only thing he can really do to be a heel, I guess. Because like everything the, else people are going to love. But It's like a bad wrestler. All he can do is body slam people. Well, you know. One of my critiques on Shinsuke was I felt like he has a couple of moves that are really good, you know, and he's got the strong style, but he doesn't have like a really, like a whole lot, like, you know, you'll see AJ Styles do a lot of different stuff. Yeah. You know, Shinsuke's got a few, uh, but he's kind of that brawler type, I guess, where, yeah. you know, he, but now he's added one at least. Uh, and does it every week. <laughs> I guess, man. So we had. I'd rather him hit him with a chair or something at this point. At this point every time, week, nah, it's I'm just a shot to, to the nuts. Wondering, like, what kind of <laughs> fetish that is, man. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. know. But I still think that Shinsuke, I still think he's pulling off the heel yeah, perfectly. I, I mean, I really like it. So to that was the end of the match, and Shinsuke does what he does. But. Um, AJ teams up with the Good Brothers, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is another version of the Bullet Club. Right. Uh, w- w- can we say that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Did you hear? What are we talking about? Uh, did this you hear Booker T yeah. giving him shit about it the yeah. other? <laughs> so uh, AJ and the Good Brothers hook up, and Shinsuke is, is up with Rusev and Aiden English. And, uh, man, Shinsuke actually got – somewhat of a new video package you know mm-hmm. it wasn't the strobes going crazy and all that kind of stuff and the song's a little different now too it, you know hey uh you know they're just trying to you know i think trying to keep him fresh yeah you know what yeah. i mean which is okay the match was what it was it didn't matter what the match was because the ending is all that mattered right was that shinsuke was going to do that again but they're going to face off at the greatest royal rumble for the title one of six other titles that are going to be on the line for greatest royal rumble and and um man i i think that the people of Saudi Arabia are going to be pleasantly, I don't want to say pleasantly, they know what they're going to get. Yeah, that's, they see, know that's, that's a great be a one. Great ma- yeah, man. Yeah, that's a great one going forward, especially for that one, because, you know, me and you talked about, and we'll talk a little bit more about it coming up. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's some matches in there that are just, hey, we need a couple big names to throw them in there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but this one actually has a little bit of the, you know, it's going to continue this story. And we we said, we, we figured that this was going to, Continue after WrestleMania, and yeah. we weren't wrong. No, no, it, it, it is what it is, and uh, um, we'll see what happens Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, with with the greatest Royal Rumble, there's no massive story like Rusev and Undertaker. There's no, you know, other than some social media. Yeah, stuff, there's no storyline there. Right. Um, there's you know John Cena versus Triple H, which they have a lot of history, but yeah. there's no storyline right. there. So we'll see what happens, and and these two shows were strictly leading up to that. Right. And they're going off the energy and the vibe of what the superstar shakeup was, which is cool yeah. because I think after this, going into Backlash, we do have a few stories that are going to mm-hmm. happen. Charlotte right. versus Carmella. We have the Intercontinental Championship with Samoa Joe. And oh, all yeah. That. Finn I mean, Balor, yeah, Seth we, Rollins. So it's, yeah. There's some great storylines coming up. But uh, it's exciting to see where this is going to go and where these kind of storylines kind of spider off and, yeah. and shake up. Uh, the only like honorable mention that I would say for uh, SmackDown this week uh, would be that um, the Iconics, they showed up again. Right. You know what I mean? And Becky Lynch and Asuka. So they are keeping Asuka very relevant. 
Uh, Becky Lynch lost to the Iconics this week as far as she got pinned. Uh-huh. They're not going to let Asuka get pinned. Um, but the only reason I wanted to bring this up is, man, they are two nasty girls, man. They they come out. They talk a lot of crap. Yeah. And not only that, they back it up. They're not bad in the ring at all. So it really helps that women's division to be really strong, and it gives a really strong heel Two women mm-hmm. uh, for that. It's going to be interesting to see that how it shakes up. I just wanted to say that about them because I got to tell you, I kind of like them, man. Yeah, yeah. They're really cool, man. Yeah, I like them too. Uh, I guess if I had a couple of maybe um, honorable mentions, they would be from Raw and okay. um, probably <laughs> the Miz Taraj looking for a new leader. That was, was fantastic. That was awesome. A lot of comedy on Raw. Yeah, and then uh, I, I, you're not a big fan, but I want to bring it up. Rhonda, she again comes out to help Natalia. And I just want to ask you, because, you know, my criticism was I didn't care. Uh, It ended up being a a decent match, but I didn't really care to see her wrestle Stephanie. I wanted to see her go ahead and get her feet wet with the roster. Where do you think this is setting up for Rhonda to go from here? Well, she is teaming up quote unquote with Natalia mm-hmm. and and really looking after her. Uh, I think Natalia is one of those veterans that's gonna really help um, groom and slash protect Ronda Rousey as she's as she's getting developed and doing what she needs to do. Um, it's gonna set something up maybe for SummerSlam, something along those lines. But just talking about honorable mention really quick, okay? Mm-hmm. So there was a t- the ten woman tag team match. Yeah. Which those are usually terrible because you know, everybody's just trying to get their stuff in, and then it's over, and whatever. So right before Natalia got hurt, and Ronda comes out to console her, and and uh, Mickey James, who that's who Ronda's going to face next in mm-hmm. Europe. They already kind of announced that is that her next match is going to be against Mickey James in Europe at some point in time. Oh, okay. And uh, she, you know, does a baseball slide, kicks Ronda in the back, Ronda, you know, armbar. But before all that, uh, Nia Jax is in the match, uh, and. All the women are outside the ring. Yeah. She jumps on all of them. All of them. And she's a big lady. But I think Ember Moon got the worst of that. (laughs) Yeah. It was on her team. Her own team probably got. Yeah, you're right. They did. Everybody got the worst of that one. Yeah. But that was a a good moment, too. I like that. Yeah, it wasn't bad. But I'm not. It's not that I'm just hating on Ronda whatsoever. I'm not doing that. But um, because she's huge name. Glad to have her. Yeah. Um, But development we're getting there and you got to put her with veterans like mickey james natalia you got to put her with those people to protect her and to make her look like the badass that she really is because in in all seriousness she's a badass yeah Yeah. i you know i've always had a little bit of a crush on ronda rousey that's okay yeah me and my wife would like we wouldn't watch any mma but we'd watch it when ronda was on (laughs) (laughs) so i'm you know me i'm happy as heck that she's on WWE and and like she's so far she's kept her promise that she's on week in week out you know yeah so um okay so we've got an interview with Marty the Moth Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk a little bit more about the what is it the greatest Royal Rumble yeah but before that I got to talk about Cadell and Company please do yeah they uh they're great yeah they have been doing construction like uh commercial construction for 20 years they're fourth generation builders, and now they're doing residential. So you know, er- everybody watches these shows on TV and gets all these ideas. Like this is the stuff I want to do in yeah. my home, eh, but you never know who to trust. Cadell and Company, you can trust. Absolutely, they're like I say, family owned and operated. They're friends of ours. They've got a showroom down in Norman. If you go to their Facebook page at Cadell and Company, then you can check out the pictures of uh, some of the work that they've done on the Jim Thorpe. Uh, historical building. They mm-hmm. did some historical preservation, the Norman Fire Department. They've done a lot of stuff o- uh, at OU campus. And yeah, and you said there's no salesman, right? Right, yeah. yeah. They've got a showroom yeah. uh, where you can check out their wood floors, carpet. They've got, like, even, like, have you seen the – it's tile, but it looks like wood floor. Yeah, And you absolutely. could put it, like, Corey – Corey Cadell was telling me you could put it in your shower. You can, holy cow. yeah, and it, uh, it's fine. To, you know, a lot of people are just they're using it everywhere. So, mm-hmm. but they've got all that carpet, cabinets, countertops. Uh, you should go check them out. Like I say, check them out on their Facebook, or you could call them at four zero five nine two eight five zero two six. Again, that is four zero five nine two eight five zero two six. Like I say, it's all about trust to me. 
Yeah. Because it's so hard to find people. And it's hard to find. Like, I look up people because I've got all kinds of projects at my house. Yeah. And it's just hard to know. But like I say, if you trust us, trust us that Cadell and Company will see you from the time that you come in to the time that you they install it. Because they do all that installation. They do that. But if you don't have it installed, even mm-hmm. if you don't have it installed, mm-hmm. you can buy all your materials from them. Yeah. They're going to take care of you. Great company here in the Oklahoma City metro. Man, go see them. Because yeah. what the, what's the biggest thing? They are going to give you 10% off the materials if you mention the Oh Yeah Wrestling Podcast. Absolutely. So get out there and do something. <laughs> <laughs> Cadell and company. All right. Uh, I guess it's time to bring on Marty Casales. Yeah. I mean, just real quick. Let's just say how cool this guy was, Mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Uh, We met him back in Oklahoma City uh, for the Lucha Americana event. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was, you know, a couple months ago. And, uh, man, they have uh, the Lucha Underground Season 4 that's coming up on June 13th. Yeah. It's on the El Rey Network. Um, You can see Seasons 1 and 2 on Netflix. I mean, how huge is that? It's on freaking Netflix. But, man, he was just chill relaxed love to be on the podcast man we'd love to have him back again at any point Absolutely. in time uh, but I, guys you're going to enjoy this interview you are going to love this interview and it's going to make you a fan uh he's not really like supposed to be the fan favorite right <laughs> <laughs> no i mean he's usually kind of the bad guy yeah but i mean he is so like in the ring, he is so much fun to watch yeah. that you don't care. No. Yeah. And, you know, he did some cool stuff the other day. So if you follow him, and he's going to tell you in the interview, so be sure to listen all the way to the end, uh, man, where you can follow him on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And he even did this, like, uh, if you follow Lucha Underground, this Aztec Pride uh, lunchbox. Yeah. And uh, he says something pretty funny at the end. I'm going to let him say that. <laughs> uh, but he did a giveaway uh, for a lunchbox and everything. And, man, it was just so cool to have him on that because but you know why marty was on here was that because this is the greatest (laughs) podcast ever brad i thought it was because you didn't uh you never let him you know give us no for an answer we don't let people give us no for an answer i just hounded him until he did it but no no he was gracious like he he was down from day one that wasn't it at all no no you're right but man we're gonna get to the interview and there's no time but now to do that right we're here with martin casales who it goes by a few different names but you might know him as Marty the Moth Martinez. Thank you so much for being on with us, Marty. Oh, no worries. Thanks for the time, guys. Um, you know, you wrestle in Lucha Underground. Uh, we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. Uh, didn't they just uh, record season four? That's right. We just got done shooting season four a couple weeks ago. Um, and then we just announced June 13th. We're going back on air, uh, airing season four. So I'm like, really excited about it. That's awesome. Uh, what was it like this this season? I, I'm sure there's a lot you can't say, but <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sure you had a blast. Uh, I didn't think it was possible, but things got crazier and more violent. Ooh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, the- we do have a new temple. We do have a new temple. It's called the Ice Temple, I believe they're calling it. Um, and uh, it was a different environment, but the same environment at the same time so it was pretty cool i'm really excited for all you guys to see it yeah were you involved at all with the impact and uh lucha underground promotion that was going on in new orleans i think it was i did yeah uh, famous b announced me out and i went and wrestled trevor lee from impact oh, on nice. the impact and lucha show has uh, that was fun. has that one aired already uh well that one was the just uh that was yeah that was on twitch or something for wrestlemania weekend that yeah. was just lucha versus impact mm-hmm. so that one aired that was live that aired live oh okay um so yeah that's already aired okay yeah i've seen i've seen some of it on hulu i just wasn't sure i had if i had uh, come across that one just yet you know with you you've done wwe tough enough and uh lucha underground uh, how important is has it been for you to learn you know all these different styles very important. Um, I wrestle a lot in Mexico. Um, I was in Japan last year. Like it's very important just cause especially Lucha Underground, there's everybody has a different style. And then I assume they're going to keep bringing more people in. Um, so I always want to be prepared and basically the more stuff you know, the better you get. So Absolutely. Yeah. I'd like to get as best as that I can. Man, watching Lucha Underground, it's been, uh, hilarious. 
a little scary, <laughs> you know, all this combined, man. This has got to be like your favorite run so far in your pro wrestling career, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be the last big run. I think that, that like, I think wrestling overall is going in a very big way coming up here soon. And I'm super stoked at kind of my positioning in the whole thing. And this is definitely like my funnest, and most enjoyable run so far, absolutely. Especially after you guys see season four. That's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Man, I got to say, what you hit on was right, man. Just as like, man, I grew up a wrestling fan my whole life, you know, and – you know, man, you know, WrestleMania would come out or a pay-per-view would come out and you had to go rent the tape on that Blockbuster, you know, just waiting for that stuff to come out. But now, man, we just, you're able to go to, you know, we go to these local events here in Oklahoma City, man, that's where we met you. And now with social media, everything is everywhere. And you, it's just on a rise, man. Where does like your take, you say it's going up, but like, where has been like the, I don't know, man, the catalyst for all this, where, you know, where everything's changed uh, for the pro wrestling yeah. business? Absolutely, the advent of the internet. The internet's making it completely possible for for there to be. I can see stuff in Japan now. I knew yeah. I was wrestling in Japan before when you had to like get VHS tapes. I got a VHS player, by the way. Oh, <laughs> so I look everywhere for that. But back in the day, you couldn't see who was wrestling in Japan. You couldn't see what's happening in Mexico unless you're like at up at midnight at twelve thirty watching Univision. Yeah, um, you couldn't see that stuff. So now I think with the advent of social internet social media and the internet that's you can see every single style everyone can see there's a different style in japan different style in uh america different style over in mexico i think this is forcing everybody to get better as a whole and making fans more aware now just more fans need to be aware there's other stuff out there than the mainstream that's right man i agree a thousand percent it's a lot of you know the other product ww's great it's fun to watch all that kind of stuff man but like with lucha underground uh it kind of it's a whole different world, man. And uh, people need to be checking that out. It's on the L Ray Network. Is that right? L Ray Network and Netflix. Yeah. Check out season. Hopefully, season three gets on there soon, but I have no idea if it is going to happen or if it, if, when it's going to happen. So I have no insight information yeah. on that. But I'm hoping it's soon. Yeah. Yeah, we're on <laughs> Netflix and L Ray. Um, I think Lucha is in the uh, kind of category of its own because we're a TV show yeah. instead of a wrestling show. Right. So how many. How many people have died in the WWE that is like, oh, that's a fun storyline. You don't want people to die in the WWE. In Lucha Underground, people, we, how many people we kill on purpose? Like, <laughs> I mean, we'll just bring them back from dead and, <laughs> later if it fits the story. But it, it, you, it, you don't see that stuff in other – you don't want to see that stuff in right. wrestling. You want, but we can have uh, Katrina teleporting back and forth. You can have me kidnapping and torturing people. Um, <laughs> Like, you don't get to see that and believe that as much everywhere right. else where it's each other's TV. I love that aspect about it. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you because Marty the Moth is a madman in the ring. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I've seen, I've, I've, I've seen some of your interviews and stuff. How, how different is Marty the Moth from Martin Casales? Because I remember one match I saw, you had opened a guy up, like you had slammed his head on the turnbuckle and you had the blood on your arm and you licked it i was like maybe later were you like uh why did i do that <laughs> girlfriend does she just gets that angry at me every single time i do that and she's right here and, me an and yeah <laughs> um, it's funny because Krista joseph he's the head writer of Lucha underground he said he writes the characters for the people that he assigns the characters to uh -huh. so i don't know if that means I'm actually psycho and torture women. Maybe I probably did that when I was younger. Um, but I think there's a little piece of everybody in, there should be a little piece of everybody in the character they play. Yeah. Um, especially a character of mine where I'm not under a mask or anything like that. Yeah. So I think there's a very, there's a very big uh, correlation between the two. I just, it's turned, it's Martin Casals turned up to 12 instead of six. Right. You know, yeah. So. So you're a DC Comics guy, right? Uh, I saw that. Heck yeah, but Marvel's kicking our ass, man. This is oh, crazy. I know. Are you gonna go see Avengers though? I am. I okay. I won't. I'm a DC guy through and through. But ah. I I have not been so excited about a movie. In, <laughs> in so long. I am geeking out. Like I haven't been excited since like the original Power Rangers movie when I was like ten years old. Yeah, it's... like I am stoked like a little girl for this movie. So who's your favorite DC character? I've got to go with Superman. Superman? The suit. That's my dude. 
Yeah. Stoops and Batman. Batman is a very, very close second. And Stoops is my man. See, I, I, I was thinking you might pick a villain. You know, uh, just based off of Marty the <laughs> a Moth. Particular one, a particular one time. You do have that laugh, man. So yeah. Uh, well, the funny thing about that is, uh, they just put in one of my uh, vignettes. They, at the end, it said like maniacal laugh, and then the first thing that came to my mind was, you know who? Yeah. So I'm like, how do I do a maniacal laugh? And whatever came out came out, and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> so there's definitely some inspiration from good old Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I I think comics and wrestling goes hand in hand anyway. So, you know, has that influenced you with your characters over the years? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um you, I, I've always wanted to be a superhero slash supervillain. Yeah. Well, I always wanted to be a superhero, but now I realize being a villain is so much more fun. It <laughs> is fun. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, absolutely. I I go I actually I do a lot of research on uh, serial killers too. Um, so it's like DC characters. What? Why do people like these particular character? Why do they hate this particular character? And then I mix that in with some serial killer research, and out pops Mario the Moth. Nice, man, nice, that's awesome, man. Speaking of inspiration, though, like, so how did you, man? This is what you want to do. You want to be in the pro wrestling business. You wanted to be a part of this. Was there a character, a favorite wrestler, something that said, "Hey, man, this is it for me. This is what I want to be a part of." Actually, it was uh, the original guy that got me into wrestling was Bill Goldberg. Okay. I was in high school. I came in late. You said you were kids, like you were kids growing up, and you loved wrestling. Mm. I wasn't. I didn't even really find out about wrestling until the Monday Night Wars. Right. Okay. So, like when Hulk Hogan was there, I didn't know who Hulk Hogan was. I knew Hollywood Hogan. I'm like, yeah. he's wrestling. <laughs> what's the big deal? I don't get it. Um, so Bill Goldberg was there and I was playing football at that time. So he speared someone on the left. So I thought that was just so cool. Then eventually WCW shut down. And then I really said, Oh my gosh, I kind of want to do this when I saw the guy named Shawn Michaels. Yeah. So, uh, I'm actually going to the Cauliflower Alley this weekend, um, where Shawn Michaels himself is getting an award. So that'd be kind of cool to see him face to face again. Man, that is cool. That's got to be just, you know, some guy that you, you know, you looked up to and it's, man, it's coming full circle. You get to see him receive a reward, be a part of the whole situation. Like you said, seeing face to face, man, you got to feel like you're making a mark a little bit into this industry, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I was thinking the other day, there's some guys throwing around ideas like, hey, how can we get better with wrestling? I'm get better. I'm like, I know something I can ask. I text on Cole Steve Austin and I'm like, <laughs> what a crazy world where I could just, hey, man, I'm looking for wrestling advice. Let's text Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it, and the, the when I worry about when I lose my phone, I always worry about, like, hey, there's some numbers in there that probably shouldn't be spread around. <laughs> but when I look at that every day, I'm like, wow, there's some numbers in there that are pretty cool. That 18 year old me would probably do like backflips and go insane for like a little girl. Definitely. Because 33 year old, the one does still. Yeah, yeah. still does. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I still like to uh, I like to rub it in Will's face that Jenny McCarthy called my cell phone once. What? <laughs> yeah, because it was back in my radio days. So <laughs> he, he told that story on one of the podcasts, man, and I just <laughs> I was like, man, you're just name dropping. You're just saying stuff for the podcast. You got to. You got to. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Come yeah, on, that's Jenny uh, McCarthy. I sorry. Yeah, yeah, all day. So uh, I you're gonna at the end of a back backlash. I think I went to, and she was there, man. I'd be bragging too. Yeah, yeah, very nice. <laughs> uh, wh what's coming up for you? Uh, you said you're going to be in Texas this weekend. Yeah, this weekend I'm going to be in Victoria, Texas, uh, with 2G Promotions. I actually get to kick my buddy uh, Matt Cross in the face, son of havoc. If you're familiar with uh, that old realm, it's the same person. Right. Spoiler. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be there in Texas. It'll be exciting. There, my buddy Kevin Cross will be there as well. Then I'm going to go to California Alley. I'm gonna, actually, I fly home first for like three hours. Then I fly back to Los Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles until Thursday. Um, I start a six or a 1% fitness challenge, actually. Boom, boom, boom. There where I'm go. actually doing a six-week fitness challenge. So that's going to be horrible because I have to give up Pepsi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still working on a movie, actually, currently called Tough Enough. Uh, not Tough Enough. It, uh, good Enough is what it's called, actually. Um, so a lot of stuff happening. My vlog I'm doing every single Monday, uh, is out there. We I'm on a network called wrestling with wrestling. So thanks guys. Uh, it's busy. It's good. And it's yeah. all 
I'm super stoked. I'm like, oh, I can't believe this is my life sometimes. And uh, you were mentioning YouTube. What's the other social media that you have that people can follow you? Because I, I got a T-shirt from you not too long ago off of your Facebook. Man, you're not wearing it right now. What is up with that? I had to wear the uh, Count Chocula shirt today. I, I apologize. I, I kind of felt like it might be like one of those wearing the band shirt when you go to the band show kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> is that what every single person does, though? Yeah, yeah. they do. I'm, yeah. They do. Uh, I'm buddies with uh, Kill Switch Engage, and I will still wear their sweater every single time to the show, and it's going to be hot as hell. I don't care. I'm going to wear it. Yeah. I'm going to no, but Count Chocula, I can't hit against that. Um, I'm actually on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Martin Casals. If you don't know how to spell my last name, I don't care if you know how to say it, Google Marty the Moth. It's right there. You'll find all of my social media right there. MartinCasals.com. I'm actually running some sweet deals. I have a Aztec Pride lunchbox, if you're very familiar with Lucha Underground. That's all the giveaway, man. The giveaway, yeah. yeah. I'll have that on my website very, very soon. Um, and maybe I'll include a fork in there just for fun. Mm. Um, <laughs> if you ever saw the loose underground Aztec pride lunchbox, I pulled the fork out and stabbed the internet. <laughs> I saw that tonight, as a matter of fact, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's on there. So go find me and write me messages. This is how this happened with these guys right here. They yeah. found me. We met them at a show. We talked on social media. So I respond to fans. Go find me, follow me. And, Get some stuff. Get in contact. Yeah. All right. I got one more question for you, man. Because yep, I'll question you all day, bro. You know, man. Here's the thing. I, you know, I, I brought my son in here before we kind of got started. He had to say hi to you, man. He, he, you know, he came to the Oklahoma City show. And uh, man, are you coming back anytime soon to Oklahoma City? Uh, it was talked about, and then it got canceled. So we'll see. Hopefully in the near future, but uh, nothing on schedule yet. So. Man, we'd love to have you, man. Yeah, I'd love to be there. Yeah, right yeah, on. I don't me. We will. We will. Oh heck yeah! Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming with a fun day. Well, that was a fun one. Except it's a lucha crowd, and they really don't like me. The <laughs> no, they didn't Latino, like you at all. <laughs> they didn't like me at all. The Latino crowd does not like me at all. I'm half Mexican people. Why do y'all hate me? That's, that's half. <laughs> I get thrown beer at me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Martin, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we hope to have you back on uh, someday soon, and hopefully, you know, see you back in Oklahoma City real soon. I hope so. I'll see you all in Oklahoma City soon, and I'll see you all on June 13th at Netflix and Lucha Underground. Thank you so much to Martin Casales, Marty yeah. the Moth, Follow him. I mean, like, you know, he's one of those guys. He really deserves to have all the fans in the world. He's he, he's good at what he does, yep. and he's gracious enough to talk to guys like us. Absolutely. And, no. I mean, I think he he loves doing this. You can tell it. He yeah. loves doing it. Yeah, so. he loves this business. He really does. All right. Uh, any home improvement projects around your house that you got going on? We're always doing something. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Me just, too. Uh, you know, I have four kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with all that, things get dinged up, they get beat up. Yeah. And then there's improvements that need to be made because I got a lovely wife that wants those things to happen. You yeah. Know? But yeah. I got to tell you, there's no better place than Candela Company to get that done. That's true. They're out in Norman. They've got a showroom. They've been doing commercial construction, like I say, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing all the home improvement projects. And right now they told me that home prices are going up. So yeah. this is the time that people typically want to do the home improvements. Yeah. So, you know, they've curated like a bunch of materials in their showroom that they've handpicked that are good quality materials that won't bust your budget. Yeah. And that's important because, I mean, you go to some of these other places and their materials are... Well, <laughs> they're jacked up. <laughs> look, we're not going to be mad at anybody for making a buck. No. And, you know, this is a great local business, And but they're here to help you. Yeah. You know, they're here to man, make sure that you get a great quality product from beginning to end, mm -hmm. whether they install your product or not. Uh, they're going to be there to support you and give you, man, just the help and the advice that you would need. That's true. And But I would... Highly suggest you let them do it, uh, especially uh, yeah. if you're like me, <laughs> because I'm like the uh, uh, the national lampoons when it comes to <laughs> doing anything in my house. But give them a call, 405-928-5026. Again, that's 405-928-5026. Check them out on their Facebook page, 
uh, at Cadell and Company, and you can check out pictures. You can find out the directions to their uh, to their showroom. But like I say, you can see the pictures of some of the stuff they've done and their materials. Like I say, they've got the flooring, the wood floor, tile floors. They've got carpets, cabinets, countertops, anything that you want. They got granite. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. So give them a call or go see them on their Facebook page, Cadell and company all right are you going to uh take the day off on friday uh i wish i could <laughs> i mean i'm just i i'm probably gonna leave don't i'm gonna leave early yeah don't, don't tell me well see i uh, i have a morning podcast i have yeah. to do yeah you do but after that i think i'm clearing the schedule i mean the thing about the network is you can watch it anytime well that's the greatest part yeah exactly but the greatest royal rumble the greatest Royal Rumble That's on the WWE statement, Network. Right? Yeah. We say we're the greatest podcast ever. Yeah. And they're saying this is the greatest well, Royal Rumble. How many are typically in the Royal Rumble? I mean, 30? it's not 50, right? So 30. there's 20 extra guys? Yeah. So uh, let me, okay, a little bit of controversy maybe. A little okay. bit of drama. Drama. Just something I was thinking about the other day. With, every, you know, you you see it with the Royal Rumble uh, that they had previously where they had a men's Royal Rumble, so... You know, in the spirit of building up the women's division yeah. and, you know, treating them like equals, they had a, a women's Royal Rumble. They did. Um, the 10-woman ten, ten tag team match mm -hmm. was a, hey, we Elimination did it. Elimination chamber. Yeah. You yeah, name it. It's yeah. happening. So, but they cannot have the women wrestling in Saudi Arabia. Part of me thinks, okay, that's a, that's a you know, they're, they're being, oh, what's the word? respectful to their culture. Sure. The other part of me thinks, though, that if I were making that big a statement about the the equality of the men's and women's division, I, why would I go somewhere that wouldn't allow the women to wrestle? You got this on two sides. You really do. Yeah. You are respecting the culture. This is what they, who they are. Yeah. Okay? Um, at the same time, this is a company that's a global company and you know, th they're a money making, you know, they have a lot of people that subscribe to the WWE network in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, this is a business decision, right? right? This yeah. is what this is completely. Now you and I would both agree that that's not right. We don't, we don't exclude people because of, they identify a certain way or sure. they're, you know, if they choose to be homosexual or not, or their gender, it, you know, we want everybody to listen to this podcast. You know what I mean? At the same time, we have no control over that. The WWE has no control over that, but it's, it's kind of one of these, and I'm not saying this is happening, but this is my brain. Okay. This is me only. Okay. What if you plant the good seed into the thing that you think needs some growth and development? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Triple H gets Triple H and, you know, Paul Levesque and, and Vince McMahon. They get to go over there and talk about what a revolution this mm -hmm. is, how great this really is. Right. You know what I mean? He plants a seed, maybe what happens. But if anything, they go make a lot of money. They have some great matches. And we're happy people because it's – you know, we don't get wrestling on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, th there's different philosophies out there where yeah, you could is. look at, you know, what makes the most people happy, and that, you know, that makes a lot of people happy that they're yeah, that they're going to yes. do that. I just felt like they could have taken a stand on that, but you know, who am I? Who am I to say? But you know, really, what I'd like to know is what you guys think. So go to our Facebook page and our yeah. Twitter and let us know what you think. If it's no big deal, or do you think that they missed a chance to kind of stand up a little bit more for their women's division like they have been. And I think they've been doing a great job with that. Yeah, so. they have. I mean, but like I said, who are we to exclude? Anybody whatsoever. Exactly. Even if they don't believe the same things that we do, that's okay, man. Uh, we're all wrestling fans, and this is, all, you know, this is what it's all about, is mm -hmm. being wrestling fans. And uh, part of the fans are right here on the OEI Wrestling Podcast and our Facebook page. Yeah. And, man, we want to give some shout-outs into some people that, man, they are interacting with yeah. us, man. Yeah. We are not just putting things out there just to put them out there. Man, we want to know what you guys think. We want to talk about them on the podcast. And I think that's what makes us different than maybe some of the other podcasts out there, Brad. Yeah. Is yeah. that not only are we saying, hey, what do you think about this, but we're going to talk about it as well. We're going to give you a shout-out. We're going to do those kind of things. And we're going to do that right now here uh, with our time on the Facebook. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. 
there's how many belts <laughs> on the line? Eight? Seven. Seven? Seven or eight, yeah. So, somebody's going to change, right? Like, some, uh, you, It's going to change think? hands, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this isn't just kind of a blow-off type uh, pay-per-view. There's there we, we mentioned that there hasn't been a lot of build-up in some storylines, mm-hmm. but it's an important pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited about it. Another important show that's coming up uh, May 11th at the uh, Farmer's Market here in Oklahoma City, Mid-Southwest Wrestling Alliance. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, they're going to be doing another show. Here's the thing. Here's the important thing. Like our guys, like our friends like Drake uh, Gallows and those guys, they sell the tickets Mm -hmm. uh, before the show. And I don't know if there's a discount, but I do know that those guys get a little bit – they get a bump off of um, it. Yeah, and they should because, yeah. you know. They're they, working hard. Yeah, they're doing this for the passion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like kind of like what we do with the podcast, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but if you can get, make a little money. You didn't get your check this week? Uh, <laughs> I'm owed a lot of checks <laughs> by a lot of podcasts. But <laughs> but help them out, you know. Like I say, the, they're entertainers and they deserve it. Yeah. Uh, so May 11th. Anything else? Man, I just would say that I did pose one question. Mm-hmm. Out there to the to our to our Facebook fans, okay? Oh yes, and, I remember. And because I was just kind of curious, and I said, "Man, we're curious here on the wrestling, uh, the Oh Yeah Wrestling podcast page. You know, what do you think about Two Hundred Five Live? Right? What do you think about that?" And uh, we had Johnny Lair who commented and said, "I used to watch it. It's kind of boring now without Neville." <laughs> yeah, and you know, truth be told, he's not wrong. Neville was a massive star. Where did Neville go? Um, he got mad and upset about the company, and I don't know if he's really still under contract or not. That's kind of a mystery. Uh-huh. But uh, man, I would love to. I'd love to have Neville back on the main roster because he just, man, he just was a high flyer and, and was incredible to yeah. watch. And then uh, Rosinda, who's commented before, she said I was really into Two Hundred Five Live and watched it from the beginning, from the tryouts to the finals. 205 was my baby. I lost interest after they kept using the same people over and over, not to mention no storyline. Yeah. Maybe it can still redeem itself. And uh, so, like I said, we don't put them out there just to put them out there. We want to know what you think. And uh, thanks to everybody coming back. My wife actually commented this week, <laughs> and uh, she had something to say about Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. And and uh, so we just want to hear it. We appreciate you guys. It was uh, – Man, the Facebook is a big part of the podcast, too. Oh, yeah. On the 205 Live thing, I will say, I don't really watch it a lot. Um, but it, it, And I don't know why, because remember back in the WCW when they had... Um, the Cruiserweight division. Yeah, Billy Kidman. Oh, yeah. Rey Mysterio. Those guys. That was fun to watch. Yeah. I loved those guys. But the 205 Live, I just haven't got into... And, you know, we, we would like to talk more about them and NXT, but part of it is, like, we record on Wednesday nights, yeah. and NXT is yeah. on Wednesday nights. So. But there's a lot of great stuff going on with NXT, uh, and they're coming here to Oklahoma City. Uh, yeah, uh, May 17th here in Oklahoma City, and uh, we're gonna, I, I know we're going to be going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, at the why Criterion. Would you, why would you not go? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> the chance that King Ricochet would be there? Ricochet would be there? Oh, yeah. Come on, man. I'll, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I want to see Ricochet. He, that Alistair dude is Black. Awesome. Yeah. Come on, man. We got to be able to go see those guys and, and gals. And what about man. Johnny uh, Wrestling? Uh, Gorgano? Yeah. Come on, man. Uh, you, that that could be a cool T-shirt. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be fun. So come hang out with us. Uh, okay, real quick. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. It's O O O. Triple H H, H. H. Yeah, yeah, it's easier that way. Triple O, Triple H, oh yeah, wrestling podcast. Man, we have a great logo that we've made for you mm-hmm. guys. Share it. Please do. Mm-hmm. We're on YouTube, mm-hmm. so we've been posting the audio versions, but we're going to throw up some video from here on out. And, yep. And uh, yeah, go check all this stuff out. Give us a share. Uh, let everybody know about us. Subscribe, and we would just love you to death if you did that. Once again, thank you to Mark for being a part of this, man. We really, really appreciate this. Lucha Underground. Yeah. On the El Rey Network. You can see uh, seasons one and two on Netflix. And yeah. Man, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, we just love this business. We love the WWE, Lucha Underground. Whether it's local, go check out your local stuff. And you know what, Brad? I love you, too. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, y'all have a great, great rest of your week.